In today's video, I'm going to show you how you can use symbols in Adobe Illustrator to edit your repeat edges easily without messing up the seamless pattern. In a previous video, I showed you my preferred method for editing repeat edges, but another great method you can use to do this is using symbols. When you turn an object into a symbol, and when you edit the symbol, it will cause every instance of that symbol to be edited in exactly the same way at the same time. And I thought of showing you this because when I made that first video, a viewer mentioned that they were thinking of linking the edge motifs so that when you move one edge motif, its copy will move at the same time. So I wanted to show you that the way that we do that is by making each one of these into symbols. So let's go over how to do that right now. Just to quickly review, remember that for a pattern to repeat seamlessly, the objects on the left side and right side need to be exactly the same and need to intersect the artboard in exactly the same place. Same for the objects on the top edge and bottom edge. And when we want to edit the repeat, if we fail to change the two objects in exactly the same way, the repeat won't be seamless anymore, so we have to make sure to get it right. So here I have some objects on the left side and the top edge of my pattern repeat box that I have in progress. So starting with the objects on the left side, I'm gonna make each one of these objects into a symbol before I move them over to the right side of the artboard. To do that, go to Window, Symbols to pull up the Symbols panel. And I'm gonna drag the panel in here with my other ones. Then select your object, go to your Symbols panel, and under the three line drop-down menu, click on New Symbol. Or you can just drag the object into the panel. Either way, it's gonna give you the Symbol Option dialog box with these options. So you can name it if you want to, you don't have to. Make it a graphic style, and for this purpose, it doesn't matter if you choose dynamic symbol or static. I'll just leave it on dynamic. And I keep this box here unchecked, then click OK. Now this object is a symbol. So I'm gonna make the other objects on this side into symbols as well. And then I'll show you how it works when I copy and edit them. So now that they're all symbols, I'm gonna select over them, right click, do transform, move, and typing in the same size as my artboard, hitting copy, and now they've been copied over perfectly to the other side of the repeat box. They're intersecting the artboard in exactly the same place, and this will give us a seamless repeat. I'll do the same with my top and bottom edges too, making the edge objects into symbols and copying and moving them down to create my seamless repeat. So now let's edit the motifs using our symbols method. I'm selecting this first symbol on the left side, and if I just try to edit it freehand, only this object will change. But if I specifically click on Edit Symbol, this is where you're gonna see the effect of symbols. So let's click on that. And now it goes into a mode that looks similar to isolation mode. Drag over the symbol to make sure that you catch all parts of it and make the changes that you want. So I'm gonna scale it up, rotate it, and move the position of it. Now click on your page to get out of this mode. And as you can see, the object on the other side was edited in exactly the same ways. It was scaled, rotated, and moved exactly the same as the first one. And most importantly, both objects are still intersecting the artboard in exactly the same place. So when we test our repeat, the pattern will still repeat seamlessly. The same will happen for all of the other symbols if you edit them using Edit Symbol. Each instance of that symbol will change in exactly the same way, still giving you a seamless repeat. So I thought this was another really good method that you can use if you want to edit your repeat edges without losing your seamless repeat. Now, one warning that I have for you is that I don't recommend that you copy your symbols into the middle of the artboard. And that's because we probably won't want the same type of changes to occur in the middle that we're making on the edges. And we want to be free to rotate, move, and scale our middle elements without them being tied to our outer elements. But you can still use the same motif in the middle. You just have to make sure that the middle ones are not symbols. So if you've copied some of your symbols into the middle, then we can select on those middle ones, right click, and click on break link to symbol. And this object is no longer going to be a symbol and it's no longer going to behave as a symbol where all the instances of it are changing in the same way. Now it's just a regular piece of artwork again and you can edit it without affecting any of the other objects. If you wanna save your symbols to use them again later on, get rid of the default symbols that are in here. Just keep the new symbols that you wanna save. Click on the drop-down menu and hit Save Symbol Library. And make sure to give your new library a name that clearly identifies what these symbols are and save them. 
This will save them in the default location on your computer. So if you close out of the symbols panel, and let's say that you've opened a new file, and you wanna pull that new symbols library back up again, you just have to go back to Window, Symbols to pull up the panel again. Go back to the drop-down menu, click on User Defined to pull up your saved library, select on the library that you want, and it'll open back up so you can use it again. So let me know if you have any other questions, and if you wanna learn how to make prints like a pro, make sure you check out the rest of my print pattern playlist. See you there.